Yeah, you know, we said our goodbye once, and um, th this has been a, a really great experience, this bowl game, to spend some more time around them and, uh, and be around them one more time. Uh, it will be bittersweet tomorrow. Uh, and it, this certainly is an ideal situation for the players or for me or for my staff, uh, but we all care about each other, and I don't know what the alternative would have been. So we're doing the best we can, and the guys have prepared well, and it, it's been an honor to be around them one more time. Yeah, Carlton uh, Davis will not play in our bowl. He had that illness earlier in the week. Uh, has not gotten better. Uh, went home uh, yesterday. I just felt like he'd be better off, you know, there uh, with, with the illness he has. Uh, as far as coming back next year, you know, with all those guys that are considering or, you know, trying to get their draft grade status, you know, we'll talk about that, you know, after the bowl game. Well, it's hard to go undefeated. It's hard to have an undefeated regular season, much less uh, win a championship game or a bowl game. Um, I was with Coach Malzahn last night, and we talked about a game we we were both coaching in uh, where Auburn was undefeated and Oregon was undefeated, and only one could come out of that. And uh, they kicked a field goal at the end and beat us. Um, so they were undefeated that year. There's not very many teams in, in the country that can run the table. And, uh, so so proud and happy for our players that they were able to do that this year. And, um, you know, this game, uh, like I said, it's an honor to be here. We're playing a really good football team. Uh, I know our guys are going to battle. They're, they're fighters, and, and they're looking forward to it. But win or lose in this game, uh, this was a special group of guys, and, and it was a special season. <laughs> Seems like a lifetime ago, Mike. Uh, you know, I said this a bunch. We, I, the first thing we have to do is get them to enjoy playing football again and uh, to believe again. But we had a lot of guys with, with fight in them, and when I, when I met with them, they all thought the team should have been a lot better than what it was, and they thought they could accomplish a lot. And I think that spirit, a um, little bit of chip on their shoulder, and the confidence that they, they could prove that they were a better team than what that record had indicated, um, I, I think that drive is a lot of what got us to where we are. Um, because without that motivation, uh, I don't know if they'd have bought in as fast to what we wanted them to do. I don't know if they'd have come together as a team quite as well. Um, but talking to the players this week, it, it's light years from where it was then. And, um, I love where the program is right now and, and where the team is, and I look forward to watching them work going <coughs> forward. Well, we, we always prepare the same way, and our kids understand that good preparation leads to good play. Uh, by the time you get to the game, the game's pretty much already played. Uh, depending on how prepared you are. And, um, you know, this could be a tough game. These guys are really good at every position, uh, exceptionally good on the, on the front lines on both sides of football. So we have to be ready to be physical. And, and uh, I know our kids, and our kids have a lot of fight in them. Uh, and I think, I think they're excited to play. Well, that's always a challenge. It's, it's a challenge for us. It's a challenge for everybody playing in a bowl game. Um, you try to manage your schedule in between the last game and the, and the bowl as well as you can. We certainly prepared well, uh, but there are a lot of circumstances surrounding the game. And, and when you watch the bowl games, you know, the, a lot of teams that had coaching changes and other unusual circumstances, uh, they're not faring very well. Um, you know, bowl games are, are about matchups more than anything, depending on what kind of matchup you get. And, and probably just as much about who's motivated to be there and who's not. And um, you know, hopefully our guys are excited to play. I think they are. And we'll see how the matchup uh, goes with Auburn. They're, they're a really good team. But I, I know our players, are, like I said, are, are prepared well and, and excited to play football. Yeah, you know, seniors going into bowl games, uh, I think, are very important. You know, with the motivation that goes with each team and all that. They usually set the tone. and. Uh, you know, some, sometimes you see these bowl games this day and time that groups are already kind of looking ahead. And But our, our seniors are locked in. I mean, we weren't happy the way we finished the last game. Matter of fact, in the same stadium. And when we got back and after all the hurt and everything was over, I mean, they rolled up their sleeves. They said, we need to win this bowl game. This will be our 11th win if we do get a victory, which we've only done six times in school history. And so they start talking about that. And they start talking about the future. Uh, not just this game, but if we were able to win and give us momentum. Um, you know, for, for the future, and I think we're in a great spot for the future. And this group has really set the foundation. Um, and we're playing a, a very good team, one of the best teams in college football, the only undefeated team. Uh, got a lot of respect for their players, their coaches, and 
Coach Frost. I got a lot of respect for him from the standpoint that you know he's taking another job. He chose to uh, do the right thing. He chose to be there for his team, and, and I think that's a great example for coaches in the future because you see college football changing and all the jobs are changing and all that, but uh, very impressed with them. But uh, our seniors have done a super job, and, and, and I really believe our team will be ready, and they need to be because we're playing a very good team. You know, through this process, it's tough. It, it was tough during the end of the season. It was tough uh, when I told the team. It was tough trying to balance a couple things. Um, I, I think the payoff has been being around these guys for one more week. Uh, through all that, you know, we tried to make every decision in, in a way that we were doing the right thing. Um, that, you know, not the selfish thing, not the thing that was easiest for us, but what the right thing was. And uh, it's certainly not ideal to be wearing two hats and to be flying back and forth to two places. And, um, and those things are hard. But the right thing to do was to be here and try to help, help these kids uh, as much as we could. And uh, hopefully us being here helps a little bit. But I, I just don't know what the alternative would have been. I think the payoff for all that is, is going to be the, this full week and being able to spend a little bit extra time with uh, the UCF family and this football team. And uh, that they're people that are going to be special to me uh, for the rest of my life. So that's probably the, the, the best part of this whole thing. Yeah, of course, you know, like, like we've done you know, in some of our rotations when he hadn't been in, we do have some depth. Javaris is one guy that uh, has experience. Uh, he's healthy. Uh, matter of fact, all of our other guys uh, will be ready to go. Uh, uh, that's that's a good thing. This rest has been very good uh, to heal some of those guys up that were banged up, you know, in the last game. But uh, I mean, obviously, Carlton is a is a great player. Uh, he's done a super job for us this year. Anytime you lose a player like that, you know. But the good thing is we do have some depth uh, on the back end. We've got some experience in the back end, and um, so. But Carlton's had a, had a big time here. I hope it's a football team. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think a lot of people have seen us play this year. Uh, we, we played two really good teams at the end of the, at the end of the year and, and had two unbelievable games against USF and Memphis. Um, I think a lot of people got to see that, and I, I know a lot of folks are going to tune in and see this one. We have a big challenge ahead of us. Uh, like I said, these guys are as good as we've seen at almost, uh, at almost every position on the field. Um, so our players know they have a challenge. They're excited for it. Um, but I know when people tune in, they're going to see a, a group of guys that love being around each other and play for each other. And as long as I'm coaching, that's the kind of team I want to have. Yeah, you know, I know for us, uh, it was different. Uh, there's no doubt. Uh, we were trying to recruit as we were preparing for the SEC championship game. And, of course, you know, then trying to finish that up. and. Uh, it was different. It was challenging. Um, then, of course, once we got into bowl prep and all that, uh, early on we were really focused on our young guys developing, and we did a little bit on Central Florida. So it, it, it wasn't uh, as big a deal as far as preparation, but just the newness of it and playing a championship game, uh, that was a challenge. Yeah, I, I think it was a challenge in my situation, even, even moving move to another university, another institution, uh, and trying to balance all that out was tough. Um, but like I said before uh, to you guys, the, we use the same formula that, that we've used at Oregon and Nebraska and other places I've been. We've played in these New Year's Day Bowls, and it's tough to balance recruiting uh, with preparation. But we had the same number of practices to get ready for this that, uh, that we did at Oregon when we were getting ready for a Fiesta Bowl or a Rose Bowl. Uh, so it was tough to balance all that, but uh, we, we definitely didn't um, sacrifice the preparation. Well, you turned the film on, and it didn't take you long. You can see they're a very good team. Uh, offensively, very impressed. A great scheme, uh, really matches their personnel. They have a lot of speed on offense. Uh, defensively, they play extremely hard. Uh, they've got some impact players. Um, they're, they're a very good football team, so that's that's what happens. And I mean, you don't get to a bowl like this unless you're really good. And probably one of the things that really stands out to me about them too is they, they won some close games. They find ways to win uh, close games. And, you know, that's a trait of a very good football team. Well, turnovers are always the biggest stat in football. I mean, we, we've been really good at that this season. Um, 
this game can be the same way. We, we can't turn it over to these guys. We have too big a challenge on our hands anyway. Uh, we don't need to give them any uh, extra short fields or, or points. Uh, listen, our guys need to be ready. They're playing a bigger group than we probably played all year. This group probably hits harder than any team we've played all year. You know, we have small, fast guys. They have big, fast guys. So our guys need to take care of the ball and protect it. And uh, I'm sure turnovers will play a big part in this game, just like everyone. Yes. You know, earlier in the year, we didn't do a very good job protecting the football the first few games. And then we kind of got in a, a rhythm, did a really good job protecting the football. Obviously, the last game, that's really what stuck, it, you know, stuck out to me. We had two critical turnovers. And, uh, you know, the better opponent you play, the more important that is. And, it's hard to overcome, and this, this game is no different, and uh, it'll be very important. Uh, it would help a lot until next year when everybody forgets about it and they look at all the games next year. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, like I said, these, these bowl games come down to matchups, so, and you know, people are going to put the onus for the entire conference on us to see if the conference deserves it to be in the conversation and if the Power Six deserves to be in the conversation or the group of five. Um, you know, there's been games where Houston beat – Florida State and USF beat somebody good, and Utah beat Alabama. And there's also games where you don't win. Um, this game's about this game. This game's not really about that. People will try to make it about that. But it well, that's the first I heard of it, so I was taking notes under the table. Um, I was hoping the list would keep growing, the, the four defensive linemen maybe, and the running back. Um, this, I, they've got good players everywhere. Um, they have a bunch of good players in the secondary, and uh, uh, we're missing a, a player or two as well. Uh, you know, Aaron Evans has been a big part of what we've been doing and been the anchor on our offensive line. And um, he, he fought through a back injury all year and just couldn't do it anymore. So uh, inevitably in these bowl games, there's one or two situations like that. And uh, I feel bad for both the kids that don't get a chance to play in this game, but I'm sure they've got plenty of, plenty of good corners. Well, we got a couple different ways that we're gonna we're gonna play and, and try to solve the the issue there, and uh, a couple different guys that can play. But th these are guys that have been in football games and uh, I think are excited about the opportunity to play. Um, Auburn's front four, like I said, is as good as we faced, so I think the guys are excited for that. But they need to be physical, and uh, a couple of them are gonna have to grow up fast and play well in roles that they haven't haven't really spent a lot of time in. So. Um, let's rock. Here we go. You're exactly right. Uh, I think this is the uh, third game in the last five games of the year. We played an undefeated team. Um, I don't know very many programs have done that. It's a huge challenge. You know, I, the good thing is we do have experience with it. Um, but, you know, that, that's also the challenge that there's, um, you know, only one undefeated team left right now, and we happen to be playing them. So uh, it's a huge challenge. Uh, it's better to have fast guys than slow guys. We're going to keep looking for them. Uh, I'll second that. <laughs> it's better to have fast guys than slow guys. We're going to keep recruiting too. Yeah, when I got to UCF, I, I must have got 2,000 messages to keep Coach Beck. And I didn't know who Coach Beck was uh, at the time, but I got to know him and uh, it was obvious to me that he was somebody that I wanted on my staff after I got to know him. And he's one of the best men that I know, and he's a really good coach. Um, leaving UCF, you know, I, I thought the right thing to do was to give every one of the coaches an opportunity to come if they wanted to. And I extended that offer to Coach Beck as well and um, wasn't sure what he was going to do, but uh, decided he wanted to, to keep the group together and stay with us in Lincoln. And, uh, you know, it's good for us. Uh, I'm kind of sad to see him leave UCF, but I'm excited to have him with me as well. And, uh, he's going to be a big part of what we do. Well, he'll put on a show. Uh, he's going to make some plays. Um, we got to protect him. Uh, we we got to run the ball a little bit to make sure they can't tee off on us in the, in the passing game. Um, Ken's a special player, and a lot of people around the country have gotten a chance to see that. Uh, I think some more will get a chance to see that tomorrow. Uh, we're so glad we recruited him. You know, he took a little heat his freshman year as he was learning and growing. Uh, and in one year, he turned into one of the better quarterbacks in college football. Uh, kid's like a son to me, and I'm, I'm really excited for his success. Yeah, you know, coming in, I, 
I didn't want to give them a lot of rules, uh, a lot of do's and don'ts. Um, I want to get them to the point where there was one rule, do the right thing, and, and don't do the wrong thing. And I, I think anytime you have an organization where the, the players are leading themselves, uh, the players are fixing problems in the locker room themselves, and, and the coaches don't have to do everything, then you, then you have a really strong team and organization. And that takes leaders, that takes guys uh, that are doing the right things themselves so they can show other people the way. And it takes a lot of courage to correct one of your teammates. Um, we're lucky that we've had some of those leaders on our team. You know, Pat Jasinski and Wyatt Miller and Shaquem, uh, a bunch of other guys. Uh, it was an easy year for me to coach because there wasn't much I had to do because most of the problems got fixed from within. Yeah, the transition, uh, uh, you know, I, I didn't get a chance to, to coach the yeah. whole game. That's something that uh, was pretty tough, being able to have to watch the team that you coached, coach playing a bowl game in a hotel room. That was that was really challenging. That's why I'm saying how much respect I have for Scott, you know, coaching the game and, and, and all that. And, you know, just uh, it's a whirlwind. You know, you, you know, we had to hire staff, we had to start recruiting and uh, develop those relationships with your players. And there's a lot of moving parts, but. Uh, you know, I have a lot of great memories with that. Yeah, he was coach to me when, when he was talking to me about uh, having a baby. Uh, Jordan's the old man on the team. You know, spent some time in professional baseball uh, before he came to us. Um, you know, I'm excited that he came back this year. I think he had a, uh, for him, uh, probably not as good a year as he would have liked last year, coming off the knee injury from the year before. Um, and to have the year he's had now this year, I think, was great for him. I think he's going to have a chance to play at the next level. Uh, he's, he's big and fast and has all the tools. Um, on top of all that, he's just great to be around and uh, really enjoyed having him on our team. Well, we, you know, we try to teach our kids not to say anything that's going to rile the other team up. Uh, but AK is confident. You know, I, I think if, if we were playing a track meet tomorrow or run, running a track meet tomorrow, he might win. I really do. Uh, but we're, we're having a football game tomorrow. So... Uh, we, we talked to him, and I'm glad he's confident. Um, but uh, I, I'm pretty sure Auburn's seen a lot of fast guys this year with the teams they play.